So then we are back with more understandings from the time of the second tabernacle services where we find the Aramaic English translation of the word. This translation comes from the original manuscripts of the prophets of the Tzayelic lineage. So then we can understand the time of the end as per Yerushiahu the prophet. We find layers of understanding of the spring feast, the Aurum feast, and also the returning of the cities of the Mashiach laid the waste for many centuries. As we read then Yerushiahu the prophet, we understand the section of it related with chapter 1-8 and the 61st chapter, areas of the holy covenant with Avraham, and then a promise via then the prophets, stating most importantly the prophet that was named obviously Moses or Moshe he said when this prophet comes listen to him very importantly the prophets after him also said regarding this prophet and the explanations of the significance of these prophecies in the Mashiach obviously when he came he explained the prophecies as they were so then what constitutes a person of being saved or not saved, producing fruit or not producing fruit? Or what do we understand as New Testament? Are those places truly the original title of those parchments where then Shaul or then Barnabas or then the others truly gave the title for? Well, it's very important understanding in Hebrew culture, not in Greco-Roman. That's what most of the troubles are found via trying to understand what those instructions are saying because they were translated in other cultures, other languages, and unfortunately they lost the originality of the instructions as they are. So, in the New Testament, when the Mashiach was speaking of producing fruit, those places were not linked with Yerushalayim. Obviously, in Hebrew, those places are not significant. And they are not given instructions via the places where they were at. Most often you find those places where the Shilishim or a specific Shaliak was there teaching these most of the time was given some references of those people going there and teaching the people. But the understanding is making these people aware of the spring feast was then completed. So then the Greco-Roman translation is very problematic because causes a lot of mysticism and then the very divine person himself becomes then a target of mysticism rather than the understanding is specific in a very specific way what he is saying via his holy instructions so then there are many sections of the holy instructions we can evaluate most principally regarding then the completion of the spring feast that's what we have then this whole section of writing after the Mashiach departed known as the Acts of Ruach HaKodesh. So to give you a hint, there is no Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians. Those are the Acts of Ruach HaKodesh in the lives of those Shilishim. So later on I'm going to explain more from the Hebrew perspective where these understandings are. So please stay tuned, much more coming up.